Welcome to Churchill, Manitoba, the polar bear capital of the world. A short flight from Winnipeg International Airport lands you in this quiet subarctic town known internationally for its large number of polar bears. It is called, after all, the polar bear capital of the world. People travel from all over the world to bear witness to the annual migration of bears along the Hudson Bay coast. This town of 800 residents is often visited by bears as the southwestern region of Hudson's Bay is home to between 900 and 1,000 animals. October and November are prime time to see the bears. However, we've arrived in September and the migration has just started. And though the bears will be an added bonus, we're on the make for Sea Run Brook Trip, fresh from the ocean. We're at Churchill Wild's Nanook Polar Bear Lodge, a fantastic oasis among the Arctic tundra. After an even shorter flight from Churchill to Nanook, we got suited up and hit the river immediately, our mode of transportation being as unique as this adventure itself. An hour bike ride up the coast lands us at our first tributary. So this is Nolan Booth. He's the lodge manager for Churchill Wild. Nolan, what an adventure getting here this morning. Uh, where are we and what's the plan for the day? Today we're gonna chase some brook trout. We've got uh, the Mist Cook and River here. Uh, let's call it 10 kilometers, 12 kilometers from Nanook Polar Bear Lodge. We've got resident brook trout, we've got sea run brook trout. It's gonna be a lot of fun. We're gonna get out here and see what we can catch. Perfect. I've never, I've never even fished for sea runs. I mean, that's that's a rarity around the world. Um, what, what should I do? What, what, what should I throw at them? West side of the Hudson Bay is incredible for sea run brook trout. The biggest thing here is we are the first people to walk up to this river and throw a fly today. So basically, grab your first thing out of your box and let's see where we start. Really, first anglers of the year? Absolutely. <laughs> this is gonna be sweet. Fishing with us on this trip are father and son Craig and Tommy Hatemanik. Excellent fly anglers in their own right. It makes sense whenever you travel, whether you're traveling within North America or worldwide, to check your regulations wherever you're going. Uh, we're in northern Manitoba here, and all of Manitoba has a barbless hook rule. So pinch the barb down, it's easier on the fish, it's easier on the angler, uh, and God forbid you ever get something stuck in you, um, it can back out really simple. But the key to this is making sure that these fish are looked after properly. You know what, this is a sea run fish. Oh yeah? Yep. How do you know? So, so as you can see, when you look at him, how silver he is. I see that. Right, no color, no orange. You can barely see, it's the beginning of the blues around the red dots. And if we're lucky, if we look at him, you might be able to see some sea lice on him. If, there's, if there isn't any sea lice on him, that means he's been here in, in fresh water for more than 24 hours. Okay. So tonight is the full moon. Uh, highest tide of the month, and um, you know tomorrow, fresh run of fish should come in with the full moon, and you're putting on a clinic today, man. Your first sea run brook trout, that is Lots just beautiful fantastic. Fish, beautiful fish, neat story. Very different, eh? Go when he wants. So we've come to this first spot here at the absolutely ideal time. We're about an hour before high tide. Brook trout are part of the char family and being sea run means they're coming in from the ocean up into fresh water. So as the tides come up, that's the brook trout's cue to start coming up the rivers. And we should start seeing fresh fish push in from the ocean coming up the river. We got on Nolan? Leech. A little black and red leech with a, yeah. with a yellow eye. I like that, because that means you and I are covering the water column. Fish. Grabbed it hard. Super hard. This is a good fish too, man. All right. Nice. It's 
been, oh, he came loose. You know, it's been a bit of a tough morning um, trying to find these fish. It froze last night, it was minus seven. And today it's a beautiful day, it's supposed to get up to plus seven. Um, I think these fish are just down deep. They're gonna warm up, we're gonna find them. Fish. Oh, there he goes, there he goes. There he is, nice. Keep working the rapids, weird, I guess. Weird, really eh? weird grab this fish did. Cool. I was at the end of the cast yeah. on the dangle, sure. and uh, it was just starting to strip it back in, and this fish came and grabbed it. So they are deeper. It got really cold last night. Everything froze up in the small ponds, and uh, I think it's just a matter of time before the fish wake up. They see, they warm up, they wake up, and uh, they come a little shallower. I'm fishing with a floating line, but with a weighted fly, a zudler, which is like a cross between a zonkler, a zonker and a muddler minnow. It's black. Here we go, first fish of the day. Did you hit twice or what? The second fish. I lost the first one. All right, if you wouldn't mind netting that guy for me. Oh, Beauty all right, fish. what a good one for the first fish of the day. Nice, man. Let's take a look. Oh yeah, that's sweet. That's a sea run, isn't it? Oh yeah. Yeah. My very first sea run brook trout. That's fantastic. Killer, man. Thanks. So what's the difference between sea run and, um, and residence? The biggest thing you're gonna see is all the colors. So you got some color in these, lots more silver. When you get into the residence, they're gonna be bright orange all okay. the way down them. All right, let's get a measurement and then we can let them go. We got 10 and 10 and 10, we got a 20. 20 incher. Killer. Spectacular. For the first fish of the day, it doesn't get any better than that. So that was a very interesting take by that, that brook trout. Um, I'm casting across the river, letting it just slowly swing. And then on the dangle at the very end, I'm giving it a couple of strips in. And that's when he grabbed it, right as soon as that fly started pulsing and moving towards away from the fish. Nolan and I decided that we were gonna go for a little bit of a walk and we found the tip of this island. Nolan started up top. I came down halfway to this little peninsula, first cast, and I got a stud brookie on here. I wonder if it's a resident. Yeah, it looks like a resident, doesn't it? Yeah, awesome. Still nice and big. Oh my gosh, it's huge. Wow. Yeah, Got him. nice. Got him. Yeah, what he's a definitely a resident. Brookie. Definitely a res. A little bit smaller than our sea run, but look at the colors on him. Look at that. Now look at look at the difference in the color. The dots on the on the sea run fish were bright orange. These are way more red, and this is a seriously darker fish. Well, thanks for a fantastic day, Noah. What a fantastic day one. Tonight is the full moon and what should be the biggest tide of the month, which means tomorrow, the Sea Run Brook Trout should be here in spades. Now we're gonna talk a little bit about bear safety and how we're gonna bring you guys all back at the end of the day. Um, Nunuk Polar Bear Lodge is strategically situated along the bear's migration route for maximum opportunity for encounters. The lodge's high fences, expert guides, and every step of the way safety protocols have resulted in 25 years of incident-free observation. The brook trout fishery at Nanook is brand new and has only been experienced by a few lucky anglers. The rivers are pristine, untouched, and loaded with both resident fish as well as the sea run fish of September. But today, the weather is very different. Still cold, but overcast and raining. We aren't alone here at the lodge, so I have local guide Kevin Brightnose along with me to offer angling support and protection should we come across wolves or bears. Well, that was cool. I'm really having a lot of fun fishing this part of the river. It's, it's quite unique in that I'm able to fish three different styles, three different pieces of structure with one cast. On my left, I've got willows that extend well over the river. So there's a really nice undercut where these trout can hide. In river middle, we've got all kinds of boulders and structure. Fish are there, I know it. And on the right hand side, I've got a grass island that also seems to have an undercut bank. So with a single cast, I can put it in the willows, bring it out, fish the undercut, let it swing across, fish the boulders, and complete the swing right over to the grass to be able to fish the undercut grass on river right. This is really neat. You're fishing three different pieces of structure with one cast. You don't get to see that very often.
fish. Oh, little guy. The weather has changed dramatically from the first couple of days. There's a ton of cloud cover, which helps a lot, uh, but it also feels warmer. I mean, we've been battling the cold um, and we just got out here first thing this morning. This is the river that runs right behind the lodge. And uh, first cast, this neat little fish came out from behind a rock. Let's see if he's a sea runner or a resident. Little brook trout, but you know what? That is okay. Look at that. Looks like he's a little sea run. No orange, very silver. Uh, fun way to start the day. That's a fish. All right, what I thought was a piece of wood on my first swing through wasn't, it was actually a brook trout. And this one is a good one. So I'm fishing with a cone-headed black woolly bugger with a little bit of green in it. And it's a small profile fly, super small. Barbless, of course. We're here to catch these fantastic sea run brook trout. So that's what you come to Northern Manitoba for. Sea run brook trout, fresh from the ocean, coming up, getting ready to spawn. 20 inch fish, absolutely fantastic. Yeah, fish on. I got one too. Wow, he's coming at me. What's interesting about where we're fishing right now is there's no reason for these trout to be here. The only structure that's here is some small rocks and a bunch of grass. And the only thing I can think of is that these fish are laying in the grass, getting ready to move up. Oh, this is a good fish. Really nice one. This one's a resident. You can tell by the color, it's really dark. It hits so hard. So Kevin's actually got a sea run trout on and I've got a resident. Um, we'll put them side by side in the net and show you the differences between them in their color. Let's get one end of the net first. Two. All right. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to walk these fish over and show you the difference between a sea run brook trout is that's fresh under the river and a resident. The colors are fantastically different. So you can clearly see the difference between a resident fish and one that's fresh out of the ocean. This fish, the ocean fish, will eventually color up really dark like the resident fish. And you can already see the spots are starting to form. Um, a lot of orange, the leading fins, the white on the leading fins and the, and the orange fins. They're absolutely fantastic fish, whether they're sea runs or the residents, brook trout are just incredible. That is absolutely incredible. To be within 30 feet of each other, catch a sea and a resi, totally fun. Coming up, we head out in style in search of more big Manitoba brook trip. The Nook Polar Bear Lodge has the ability to access previously unaccessible rivers via helicopter, heli fishing, opens up tributaries which literally haven't seen anglers in a hundred years. They are that remote. You do know how to travel in style, my friend. That was an epic ride in. That was a lot of fun. What's up today? Um, we're fishing. We're on a river west of the lodge, uh, probably about uh, 15 kilometers. It was a little tough to get here today, uh, but here we are. We're ready to start and uh, hopefully it'll be similar to yesterday. A whole right. bunch of sea Bro runs. again? Absolutely. Yeah. Sea runs and residents. So. Okay. Well, I've got uh, a black bugger and a white bugger tied on. Let's see, uh, let's see what the fly of the day is going to be. Absolutely. Okay. Kind of right where we were just talking about they should be, right? Yeah. On a black 
bead headed leech. Nice 12 inch fish. We've been hit with a bit of a cold front here the last couple of days. It's getting well below zero at night and it has affected the fish, uh, the residents anyway. Absolutely. The, um, uh, the sea run fish are just starting to come in and we're starting to see them now. They're a lot bigger and they're a lot more aggressive. Um, this water's freezing cold, I'm here to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> it's cold. Yeah. Only and, place without ice today. And you know what? That's, that's brook trout fishing, man. It's, uh, sometimes it's all or not, and it looks like things are turning around. Hope so. This is a unique situation here. We've got trees directly behind us. Um, and two different kinds of moving water in front of us. Fast water moving downstream and a back eddy slower moving upstream. So what I'm doing is I'm using the surface tension of the water to do a reverse roll cast. I'm left-handed and generally my roll cast come off my left shoulder, but because of the situation we're in, I have to do a reverse cast. So what I'm doing is using the water to get that cast across the run. Then with a high rod tip to keep the, um, line off the slow moving back eddy, I'm able to fish the entire run to swing it and hopefully catch a brook trout. Oh, got him. Sweet. A little resi. They're neat little fish. Got to get them out from under these banks here and... You know, it's interesting because in the, in the summertime when the uh, sea run trout aren't here, Right. Yep. That happens in the fall, Absolutely. that run happens. You've got a reliable resident stock brook trout fishery here, which is fantastic. I mean, we've caught them up 20 inches and more. I mean, it's, yep. they're fantastic. Uh, the water's a bit cold today, so they're a little slower, but uh, they're always a good time no matter what. Well, that's the key, right? Is, is you've got a small fly, very minimalist, and you're fishing it extremely slow. I'm being stubborn. I've got a, I've got a big cone-headed bunny leech on and I'm trying to rip it, trying to get that, that uh, anger reaction from a big fish yep. and it's not working. You're cleaning my clock today. Yeah, but yesterday it was <laughs> tides returned. Yeah, okay, yeah, sure. So what I'm gonna do though is I'm gonna take a, a page from your book. I'm gonna slow down, floating line. I'm just gonna relax and do some fishing and hopefully the slow, the slow technique will pay off with these resi brook trout. Cool though, all the same oh colors in a tiny little fish. Yeah. That's still, still pushing 10, 11 inches. Yeah. And I say it all the time, the best part about catching these brook trout is letting them go. Gonzo. The fishing at Nanook is just in its infancy. It's three years we've been doing it. It's unique down here because there's so many residents. We can spend time in multiple rivers that we have access to very close by the lodge. One of them is literally a two minute walk from the back door. And our, our long-term goals really are two different tides for September. So we're talking probably at the, at the peak, maybe 12 to 14 people a year are gonna come fish these rivers with us. What's it like catching a sea run brook trout? Unexplainable. Until you've done it, um, a 20 inch fish takes off like it's a salmon in the ocean. Worldwide, uh, I would say sea run brook trout are a rare commodity. There's uh, nowhere else I know of that you can fish for them like this. One of the things we've done at Church of Wild is keep our numbers small. Um, all of our lodges are maximum 16 capacity at a time. Uh, we only run these for short periods of time also. This lodge here has been up and running for seven weeks. Uh, total, all of our lodges, all of our locations will probably be four and a half months worth of work this year. And heli fishing, could be impressive. We've got some places that are untouched. With the helicopter here, I'll be able to take people into places in these rivers that nobody has ever fished. Man, that fish just hit so aggressively. I think it's safe to say that this weather funk is over and these fish are starting to brighten up and feed. Wow, super strong. There is a noticeable difference. I mean, both sea run trout and resident trout are super strong, but the sea runs, you can almost tell right away. They're just that little bit more energetic and rambunctious. This fish, 
the way it's been told to me, has come in and hasn't even been in the fresh water for more than 24 hours. After 24 hours, I've been told the sea lice die and fall off the fish. So let's get them to the net and I can show you what these lice look like. So the sea lice were on his dorsal fin and they've fallen off in the net. So I'm just gonna simply let him go. There he goes, gone. If you fish long enough, inevitably you're gonna get out on a trip where the weather doesn't cooperate with what your plans are. When that happens, that isn't a be all and end all for your vacation or for that fly fishing trip that you've been looking so forward to. Um, what you need to do is simply adjust your tactics to what the fish are telling you. We started out uh, fishing fast, large flies, power fishing, if you will, looking for the aggressive fish to eat. With the weather that we've had over the last couple of days, dipping well into below zero, into freezing, um, the fish have changed their behavior. And what they're doing is they've gone really deep or they've gone underneath structures such as these overhanging willows. So what we're doing is I've got a setup of a um, 350 grain sinking line, sinking tip uh, with a short leader on it and a floating line with a long leader on it. This rod I'm using for uh, slow presentations of streamers and this rod I'm using for uh, getting underneath those willows with small little leech patterns and things like that. Um, so what we're doing is we're going deeper, we're slowing down and we're looking for the structure that would hide these negative fish. They will eventually turn on and they will eventually get hungry again. And when that does, and you happen to be there, it's gonna be lights out. Hey Nolan, what's the weather been doing the last little while up here? We've had two weeks of extremely cold. I mean, it's the first time in September I've seen ice on the edge of the bay. We never see that. Yeah, we get the odd night where you get a little bit of snow or something, but never where, it's, where there's ice building up like that. And there's chunks of ice out there that are six, seven inches thick. We get out here and the water up here is open, but it's definitely gonna slow these fish down and put them to the bottom. Oh yeah, this is a big fish. This guy's... Oh my gosh, it's huge. Oh yeah, beauty. Fish of the trip. Love it. So do you think this is a resident? No, definitely a sea run. Look at how is white it? his belly is. All, oh, okay, yeah. All white or silver, no color in the belly. Right. All the residents have big orange bellies on them. Right, he's got some lice in his gills too, still. Awesome. Look at that. Beautiful fish. Wow. Fantastic. Yeah, that's all of 22 inches. Yep. Look at that. Perfect. That's awesome. Well, that about does it for this episode of The New Fly Fisher. Thanks for watching. I want to thank everybody at Nanook Polar Bear Lodge for their hospitality and their fantastic brook shirt. I'm Mark Melnick for The New Fly Fisher. Check us out at www.thenewflyfisher.com. Remember, adventure is out there. All you need to do is go and find it. And what better way than to do it with a fly rod in your hand. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the back country. Hi, I'm Mark Melnick from The New Fly Fisher Television Show. I really hope you enjoyed that full length episode. If you did, do me a favor, hit the like button and subscribe today. Now new episodes are going up all the time, so click that bell icon so that you're notified the next time we put one up.